and making high six figures to deciding mm-hmm. I didn't want to do that anymore. Something I'd worked for for 10 years mm-hmm. and I wanted to start from the bottom, right? I wanted to start brand new. I wanted to risk, you know, my retirement savings. I wanted to risk my livelihood. I wanted to risk everything by just chasing a passion. Um, mm-hmm. And I've always been someone that's like been very focused. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us in today's podcast. We all have to take that one decision in our life, which completely changed our life ups and downs. And that's what you can able to learn from today's podcast, because the guest we have, she had everything after working for 10 years in industry. One day she realized that this is not what she wanted for herself. And that very day she made her mind. She decided that she going to follow her passions. So after following her passion for 10 years, here she is. She is one of the renowned fitness trainer and professional athlete. She competed in many shows and she got featured in Clock Out DC. So without taking your time, let me dive you into the podcast. So Yeshika, thank you so much. We are very glad to have you on our podcast platform. Finally, you have. I really appreciate that. So, Jessica, before I start this podcast, I just want you to give a quick introduction about yourself. As I have already done a little bit of research about you, that like the kind of competitions you have, and I have also gone through the like testimonials or the articles which you have on the like Clock Out DC. That was really mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah, that is thank you. Really amazing. I just want to begin this podcast with that. That how it's feel like to be. a fitness professional to have all these achievements how it feel like to be i mean i'm i feel really lucky <laughs> um i i haven't really been working in the fitness um space for all of that long although i've always been um an athlete but um i spent 10 years in the sales and lobbying world in washington dc so i um my most recent job in that career field i was a lobbyist for the restaurant industry um and i loved it don't get me wrong i mean the food and the drink and the traveling it was great but i remember waking up one day after a trip and just thinking looking in the mirror and thinking like this is not what i want my life to be i'm not happy um there were a lot of things that were great about it and then there were a lot of things that i just didn't feel like i was fulfilling my true purpose um and i at the time i was um I was heavy into like meal planning and nutrition but i was also doing crossfit i was a crossfit athlete Um and then um I decided a few months later that I was going to leave that profession and go into fitness full time and and uh it was a tough transition um because I really didn't have much formal training um but I went ahead and did it I made the leap um and then you know one thing after another after another you know I started CrossFit as a CrossFit coach I worked at an F45 um I then got into bodybuilding personal training group fitness Um and then I launched my own business uh boss building at the beginning of 2020 January of 2020 right when the pandemic started right before the pandemic started um and so it was interesting because I started everything really at a time of like a lot of uncertainty um but it it prepared me for I mean you can never be certain about what's going to come and what's going to happen in the future so it really it really prepared me for um just being dynamic and being really versatile in the fitness industry which is something you kind of have to be at all times so Um so I'm re- really really grateful for all the opportunities that have come my way but I also feel like I've I've worked really hard to get to where I am too. Yeah, obviously the kind of conditioning or maintaining like I have saw the pictures like recently you have post a story in that you were comparing yourself in 2009 20, 2020 and 2021 and the way you are maintaining that's absolutely phenomenal. And I was as I was researching about you I went to your Instagram profile I went on the kick off websites and where you have mentioned the importance of a trainer in people's life that why someone needs a trainer and you have yeah. given a very beautiful example so i just want you to explain that how it's feel to be a trainer and how why trainer is that important for someone to start their fitness journey sure um i think i forget what i put on on the kickoff profile but the the analogy that i always use with people mm. is Uh, you're not going to fix your car yourself if something's broken, right? You're going to take your car to a professional that is well trained and certified and knows what they're doing to work on a car. So the same thing with your body, right? I mean, we all have different levels, varying levels of knowledge. We can do a lot of research, but why not go to a professional that is trained and understands how best to work 
um, with your physique and get you to whatever goal that you're going to work towards. You know, every trainer has different niches mm -hmm. or specifications. So it's, it's on you to kind of research and figure out which one works best for you. But um, not only from like the knowledge and getting results perspective, but also from the accountability perspective, making sure that someone is there to hold you accountable. I mean, I'm a coach and I still have coaches that I work with. Um, mm. because I, I know, obviously know a lot and can train myself, but, um, there are coaches that I work with just to like be that objective eye um, and hold me accountable, make sure that I'm sticking to the plan. Um, and then I don't fall off because, you know, we're all human and we all tend to like be super critical or maybe just laugh off sometimes. So having a coach, not only for that knowledge, but also to like hold you accountable and be that, that, um, objective eye is really mm. helpful. So is there any particular pattern you follow to keep the yourself accountable or your client accountable? What they have to do exactly to keep them some accountable that whether they are going on the right track? Um, so with my clients, and it's the same, uh, it's a very similar um, uh, format that I follow with my coach, um, is I do weekly check-ins. So I'll see got me as an athlete first for an example. Um, so I have a coach that I work with. He is my technically my competition prep coach for when I get ready for shows, but I work with him in the off season as well. And every right now, Thursdays are our check-in day. Every Thursday morning I get up, I, I take my weight, I do my poses, take my pictures and I send it to him along with answering a litany of other questions. You know, how I'm feeling, how is sleep, how's digestion, stress levels. Did I stick to my diet? All of that. Um, with my clients, I do something very similar. I have a um, questionnaire. It's a link. It's online. Um, and they just like click, click on the link, log in, and they fill out the questionnaire, submit their photos, their weight. Um, and I'm not so concerned about weight, to be honest. I always tell people, like, don't focus on the number. I just use that as like a trend indicator. Um, and it, it depends, you know, if someone's looking for fat loss, muscle gain, body recomposition, all of that. Um, but the check-ins, it's something that they know, they pick their check-in day and every day or every week rather on that specific day, they are submitting their check-in. Um, and then I'm responding to them with maybe additional questions if I have them, updates to their meal plan, suggestions on cardio. If I'm working with them to work on their like uh, workout programming as well, I'll also give them feedback on that. Um, but the check-ins at the same time every week are really helpful so that we can make sure we are always looking at the same moment each week um, so we can control as many variables as possible. Yeah. Yeah, because we have our clients on this platform, who, those who listen to this podcast regularly. So when we mm -hmm. talk one-on-one -on -one to them, so what we have found that they have lack of consistency in the routine which they, which they are following exactly for their goal. Yeah that they want to lose fat, whether we want to gain muscles. So there is a lot of inconsistency and they have lack of knowledge. Like right now, knowledge is available in the internet, but right now you don't have someone physicals like you. You provide mm -hmm. personal one-on-one -on -one coaching to your clients. You provide all the measurement that this is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. So I just want to ask you that when you started your fitness journey, so how were you, like how you excited exactly? Is there anyone who guided you or you started with your own and let it down that you come into this profession? So how your journey was started? Sure, yeah. So I had, as I mentioned earlier, I've always been an athlete. I played soccer, lacrosse, softball, a bunch of different sports growing up. Mm. Um, and then I went away to college and that kind of, I mean, I, I was more focused on school and having fun to be honest. So I didn't, I wasn't really an athlete at that mm. time. Um, and then in my early 20s, um, I actually had a lot of stress-related heartburn and like digestive issues. And I couldn't get to the bottom, but I couldn't figure it out. And fast forward a few years later, um, when I really doubled down on fitness again and making health and fitness a priority, all of those heartburn issues went away. My health issues went away. Um, and then, you know, my, my career kind of um, took a front seat while my health took a little bit of a backseat again. And then I got into CrossFit and I started CrossFit and not everyone's a big fan of CrossFit and that's okay. I always say it's a, it's a catalyst for people to get into fitness. So whatever the modality is that you choose, um, it is, if it gets you into fitness and keeps you healthy, then I'm all for it. Um, and so that got me back into fitness. And then one of my coaches, he became my nutrition coach and helped me learn a lot more about that side because the fun part is in the gym right everyone wants to do that if yes. you're into fitness the difficult mm. part is what you do outside the gym right the right rest the right recovery the right food water sleep stress management mm. all of those variables if you can't master those 
you have no business destroying your body in the gym, right? Um, and so I was, was fortunate that I had a coach that mentored me through that. And then he helped me kind of navigate the path towards becoming a fitness professional myself by teaching me as I went along. Hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely right because most of the people think that they go, they will go like seven times in the gyms, like the body yeah. getting able to put the body in the gym, but they totally mm-hmm. neglect that they have to focus on the nutrition part because there is a 80 20 percent rules. Like the main funda here is that you have to give 100 percent in your nutrition. So on that time, is there any specific goal you had that this is what I want to be or it's happened suddenly? Um, you know, I didn't think I would ever get into bodybuilding, um, but I'm such a, a competitor. And when I was introduced to it and I did my first show, I was already working in fitness, mm-hmm. but I thought I just wanted to mentor and teach and coach people. Mm-hmm. Then when I realized how, I knew I was a competitive person, but when I realized I could also compete and then learn tools, skills, um, mental discipline and toughness mm-hmm. grit that I could then teach my clients. Um, that was when I realized that was a journey that I wanted to be on simultaneously. So um, my goal is built to be an IFBB pro women's physique bodybuilder. Um, and I'm like this close, we're almost there. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting because while I'm on that journey, I'm learning mm-hmm. things daily, you know, new techniques for lifting, mm-hmm. new um, ideas for nutrition, um, a mm-hmm. lot of things about mental toughness and just like your mental health and all the games mm-hmm. that you kind of have to play to stay in it all the time. Um, and then I'm teaching that to new clients as I take them on or clients I've been working with for a while, you know, if they hit a plateau mentally or physically. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I didn't ever anticipate being a competitive athlete the way I am now, but I have never wanted something more in my life, nor have I worked harder for something in my life mm-hmm. than I am now. Um, mm. And so I, my hope is that I can achieve that status and continue to compete on my own and then inspire others and, and teach others how to apply that same mental discipline and toughness to their own lives, whatever their goal may be. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely wonderful because in, you. the, in your recent competition, you just missed that a little bit. So, so close. How, <laughs> how, how it was felt because like bodybuilding is such a thing that is very competitive, like you are working yeah. very hard. Your competitors are also very working hard. So a lot of people, they try their best. They give their best, but somehow they just miss a little bit. So how yeah. was your feel on that? Could you please explain to our audience so that will, they, that will motivate a lot of them because not, it's not all the time winning. Like sometimes mm-hmm. you have to lose to learn yeah. the things. Then you can able to appreciate that how important that victory is for you. Yeah, so yeah. Can you you're right. That move in? Sure. Um, I mean... I'll be really candid. This past show, when they called my name out at second place, I was heartbroken. Like, you know, you have to keep a Mm -hmm. smile on stage, but we all have first place in our mind, right? And I don't care what anyone says, second place sucks to hear when you want first. Um, So, I mean, in that moment, I was frustrated. I got off stage. I, I went into the bathroom and I just stood in the stall and I collected myself, you know, I didn't get upset, but I just stood there and I was like, okay, you can't let people see that this is getting to you. You need to put on a brave face. You need to lead by example. And so I came out, uh, I saw my, I had so many uh, family members and friends that came down for the show in, in South Carolina. So I didn't want to let them down or disappoint them. So we went, we went out to dinner. We did like a champagne toast. Um, but what I realized over the next few hours and days and weeks after that was I was so happy with everything that day. And the only thing I was unhappy with was my placement. So if you can't accept, and it's such a subjective sport. So if you can't accept the judges feedback and the placing in bodybuilding, then you don't have a place in that sport. It's different than like a performance sport, right? If, if you are a power lifter and your goal is to deadlift 335 pounds, if you deadlift it and you get the green light and you've done everything you're supposed to, it's A equals A plus B equals C, right? Mm-hmm. Bodybuilding, it's not the same way, right? So you kind of have to look at your journey and think, did I beat the package that I brought last year? Did I improve? Did I do all the things that I wanted to do? Because at the end of the day, it's all about the journey and not that just final placing on stage. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm making it sound easy right now. It has taken me a long time to get to that like mental clarity. And it's so frustrating because you really, really want to win. But if you're just so focused on the results, you're going to miss everything else that you're learning along the way. So 
Um, so it felt really crappy. <laughs> and then, um, and looking back at it now, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I looked at the photos and I'm just so proud. I look at my posing routine. I'm so mm -hmm. proud of what I did. Um, so there's not a moment that, that goes by where I am disappointed in that because I did everything that I could within my control. Mm -hmm. Um, but in a sport like this, you have to be okay with accepting the things that you can't control. Um, and that's, and that's kind of something that I try to teach, um, you know, friends, fellow competitors, clients, anyone that I train, um, is that you can't, you can't dwell on the things that you can't control, but if you can control everything that is within your control, if you can master that, um, and you've improved, then that's, that's, that's the win at the end of the day. Yeah, that's absolutely because and the way you have carry yourself throughout the competition, like during the prep, you have to go a lot of things. You have to do a lot of things Like you have yeah. to cut down your wheels, like you have to be very, very strict with the slips, water intake, food intake. So yeah. those are the hardest parts. So yeah. when you go through this process, those are the things which build the memories like you can able to recall those and those actually yeah. give the real value. And that's appreciate the like how important that place is. So in our yeah. community, a lot of a lot of members of our podcast, they are totally focused on the goal oriented. Mm -hmm. We always come bring whatever podcast, whatever guests we bring here. We say that it's all about the journey you make in achieving your goals. Like if you be on the journey, the every single day you improve, the every single day you just feel the work you are doing with passions, that will give you a real joy. The victory is for just a moment. Like you will win and the next moment you will start looking for something else. Exactly. So, your story, the way you have explained about your journey, that it was frustrating, but you have found that all golden part of your life, the way you have started doing the prep, those were the absolutely inspirational for all of us. So I just want to ask you that how you plan your day exactly. So like mm -hmm. during the play, so do you have any proper mindset or any, any proper routine which help you to plan your day that this is the thing which I have to do today? So how you plan your day? Sure. Um... So I, I mean, I live and die by my calendar, my Google calendar on my phone. You know, if it's, if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't happen. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's especially true for fitness professionals because um, we typically are doing a lot of different things, right? So I have, I own my own business and within my business, I have nutrition clients, I have meal planning clients, I have workout programming clients, general health and wellness. Then I train clients at a few gyms. So I've got all of those clients and then all the systems that you have to understand and work mm. within to train those clients. But then I've got private clients that I train outside of gyms too, mm. and I'm traveling to them. Um, mm. And then I've got a lot of virtual clients through gyms. Uh, I live in New Jersey now, but I used to live in Washington, DC. So I mm. maintain some of those clients mm -hmm. as well. So there's a lot of moving pieces. That's why I say if it's not in my calendar, it doesn't happen. So on mm. Sundays, I'm looking at my calendar for the week and I'm trying to understand mm. where I need to be when. And then I do that each evening to look at the mm. next day to make sure because there's always moving pieces. Um, mm. Meal planning is a big part of it. I'm always making sure that I have all of my meals prepped and packed. You will never catch me without my food. <laughs> I always have my food with me. Um, and then making sure that like, you know, I've got a grocery shop on Sunday, I probably have to grocery shop again on Wednesday. And so I'm making sure I have that time on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, I get up and do fasted cardio first thing in the morning, five days a week. So I make mm -hmm. sure even if I have clients in the morning, I'm waking up that extra time earlier. Um, and a lot of people will ask you to like, how do you do it all the time? Like, I just want to sleep in. And I mean, honestly, I care about other people's expectations, but the last mm -hmm. person I want to let down is myself. So I'm not missing my cardio for anything. Um, so it's honestly just sitting down and looking at my calendar and figuring out what needs to be done where, building in the time for it, mm -hmm. making sure I have the time to meal prep because that's a big thing that a lot of people feel like they don't have time for or they're left mm -hmm. without their meal. Um, and then, and then just all like the other little things, like making sure I'm in gym clothes all the time, so making sure I've got laundry done. So I'm not rushing to find gym clothes, you know? Um, but I'd say like, yeah, living and dying by my calendar and just making sure I'm sticking to what's mm -hmm. in there, mm -hmm. um, so that I don't let anything fall off my plate. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important part here, because like, you know, you have everything in your calendar, but you have a priority that this is the thing which I have to do no matter what it takes, like. I have to do five days cardio in the morning. Then I have to go to my clients and I have to do my workouts. So this is what I want to highlight to all of you, those who are listening to this podcast, that you have to understand 
which is important what is your primary goal what is your secondary goals so once you have a proper clarity on that so you can able to give a better time a quality time on that things so with that mm-hmm. said i think i just want to move to a new questions like the next question like in fitness industry like everybody can do workout but how someone train their mindset because that one is mm-hmm. the ultimate things like if you have a strong yeah. mind if you have a then you can able to perform better so a lot of people a lot of our clients a lot of podcast those who listen to this podcast they struggle with their mental stress they not able to be focused so how what do you suggest to them um i always tell when people ask me that question i always tell them i ask them what their why is right why are you doing what you're doing right and everyone's goal is different i'll speak to um i have a client all the come to mind for example she's a mom of four okay she is busy um she's also in school for nursing and she is a homemaker um and helps her husband run their business her why is making sure that she stays healthy so that she is there for the long run for her children right so i see her three times a week i train her in person and i also do her meal plan mm-hmm. when she feels like things are getting too stressful and maybe a meal falls off or she's going to miss a personal training session I'm not here to be disappointed and yell at her. I'm here to hold her accountable and say, "Hey, what's your why? Why do you want to do this? If you let those meals fall off, if you miss your training sessions, you're not going to achieve your goal." Right? Once in a while, fine. But we want you to be doing this. Eight, we want you to be meeting your goal or um, what it takes to get to your goal 80% of the time, right? Um the 20% we know things come up, right? Like your kid has to go to the emergency room and you don't pack enough meals, stuff like that. Um And I think about it the same way for myself, right? I have a goal. I am not going to let anything stand in my way except for myself. And I'm not going to let myself down. So yeah. I'm constantly reminding myself of my why. Um if you don't have a tangible goal to work towards, right? We have that the the um the smart uh framework, right? People say it's a, a goal should be sustainable, manageable, attainable, uh and tangible, right? So okay. if you can't identify a goal with those four things maybe it's time to think about what a new goal is right you want to find something that is going to like light your fire and keep you really passionate and then once you've developed those um habits and the discipline in working towards your goal when that motivation wanes you're still going to have those habits and that discipline right because yeah. motivation motivation is fleeting it is not there forever but if you develop those habits while motivation is really high when the motivation goes away it's going to be come turnkey it's going to be second nature because you've been doing it all along so yeah. i always tell people like you have to find a goal that you are truly truly passionate about and be motivated and excited to do it develop those habits yeah. and stick to those habits because when you when you forget why you want to do something you have those habits to fall back on yeah. yeah that's absolutely right because once you build a habit you will start doing all the tasks which is required like if you have a goals and you have built the habit around it so no matter how stressed your life is how mentally stressed you are your body is actually going to perform those tasks so this mm-hmm. is actually a wonderful so with that i want just ask you that how can someone build a habit for anything like if anybody wants to go for a workout or maybe for a finding a passions or playing any sports so how can one build a habit and how they can measure that whether they are building or not because as a being a coach you might have come across your clients where they are following a pattern but somehow they are declined they are getting mentally down motivate their motivation is getting down so how you suggest what you your what's your idea on that that how they can follow and keep the motivations yeah um well i always tell people when you get started don't try to start everything at once right because that's a recipe for failure right that's very overwhelming mm-hmm. i know very few people that can start a new meal plan a new workout program a new sleep schedule uh a new water intake goal right all at once and be successful yeah. i know like mm-hmm. maybe three people ever and i'm guilty i'm one of them i know i can do all of it at the same time but but most people can and that's something that i've learned is that mm-hmm. it's easier to pick one thing to work on at a time so for example i have another client who she's a mom she's a full time she works full time as like a very high powered lobbyist and attorney in dc and just getting her meals in throughout the day can be a challenge with all of the meetings that she has to be in going into yes. the office going to capitol hill 
Um, and I still train her virtually once a week. So she's also trying to get her workouts in. Um, and I always tell her like, let's start small. Okay. This week, my goal for you is to make sure that, yeah, we'll work on the food. We'll work on the workouts, the cardio, but this week I want you to focus on seven hours of sleep a night. That's your number one goal. Right. And mm -hmm. if we can master that, then we build on that. Right. So next week, okay. You've got seven hours of sleep, six out of seven nights. That's great. Let's keep that. Now we're going to work on your water, right? So we want to make sure you're getting at least a gallon of water in. So this week, your goal is to get that water. So every week we're building, 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 building until we've been able to master all of these things. But I would never come to someone and be like, you have to do all of these things this week because that seems so overwhelming, right? Yeah, that's so absolutely right. Like, hmm. Because yeah. small step can bring, will help you to build a big habit. You can't go from fourth step to like fifth stairs. Yeah. You have to take a little yeah. step. Like first, yeah. you have to work on one one little skill. Then you can go to the next one. Exactly. So with that, I just want to ask you that, like, what are the biggest challenges you have faced? Like, and we all have stories behind, like our back when we come to go to any field or even we start anything. So we all have some big challenges. So what was your? I think I mean a big one that comes to mind was honestly was my transition from being in uh, like the high powered lobbying industry and making high six figures to deciding I didn't want to do that anymore. Something I'd worked for for 10 years and I wanted to start from the bottom, right? I wanted to start brand new. I wanted to risk, you know, my retirement savings. I wanted to risk my livelihood. I wanted to risk everything by just chasing a passion. Um, and I've always been someone that's like been very focused on my achievements. And so to make that transition was really difficult, but I knew at the end of the day that I wanted to wake up really excited about what I was going to do most days and not dread what I was going to do. Um, and that kind of oversimplifies it, but the, the really challenging part was when I realized, okay, I, I'm not going to go back to what I was doing before I left that job. I have to make this work. Um, you know, I had to like get certifications. I had to build my credibility. I had to um, learn how to program workouts for the first mm -hmm. time. I had to prove myself to clients. I had to get new clients, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's and you're starting from essentially nothing. So um, I, what I have learned time and time again when things have gotten tough for me mm -hmm. is that I'm always going to land on my feet and I have to trust that I'm going to land on my feet because I'm going to work hard no matter what, but it was really challenging to not know what that next step was going to be and what it was going to look like because for so long, I knew what my career trajectory was. was. Um, and it kind of felt like, you know, right when I graduated college and I was 21 years old and I didn't know what my career path was going to look like. That's what I felt like 10 years later. Um, and it was frustrating because I didn't want to be back in that spot, but I, you know, I pushed through, I made my connections, I went outside my comfort zone, I got my certifications, mm -hmm. I studied, I learned, um, I learned by doing, I learned by becoming a bodybuilder myself. Um, mm -hmm. So it, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was, it was very challenging, but, but, you know, I had the right people around me, I had a supportive, you know, family and friends group, um, and I just kept saying yes, I kept taking the next step, I kept working towards what my passion was and I'm still I still am right like I'm not I haven't achieved all of my goals yet but um but you just have to trust that if you keep working towards your goals and you don't give up mm. you're going to achieve them yeah that's absolutely right because the position you hold right this moment like only you can understand that how strong willpower you need to be here like yeah, yeah. The challenges you have faced like it's very hard to put on the words like you can't even to explain yeah the things you have done and the kind of changes you have done in your life to follow your passions. That's what we recommend on this podcast that all you have to do, you have to find your passions. Once you understand that this is the thing which I really want to do. So no matter that you have to go dive into like fully, you have to find out all the ways that what are the things which I have to give to succeed in that field. The way you have explained that you have worked for 10 years and suddenly like you have shifted for this field and you have mixed all the savings which is a very, which is a very actually a hectic task. Like you have risked yeah. everything, your fundings, yeah. your savings, your career. You have no idea that where your life will take on. Exactly. The things you have made up right now, like the way you are competing, the kind of, the kind of things you have built, it's absolutely wonderful. So I just want you to say how our audience, like how, what you suggest them so they can help themselves 
and mentally and how they can find their passion exactly or is there any road map like if someone wants to be a fitness trainer or a like fitness professional so what are the things they have to focus is there any particular road map they have which they have to follow um so my first coaching job was i might have mentioned earlier was at an f45 um and i didn't have any certification mm. um and it's that's like a you know it's a franchise larger brand mm. Um, so I would recommend if someone is like interested potentially in coaching or getting into fitness, you have to dip your toe in the water somewhere. So maybe ask like a gym or a fitness studio, like, Hey, could I shadow? Could I learn from you? Could I assistant coach? Could I work the front desk? Um, could I work part time? Uh, you want to get that like real world experience in that career field before you make that big jump. Mm. Um, and then also just read as much as possible, study as much as possible. I mean, there's so much, as you mentioned earlier, there's so much information out there. The more information you have, the more you're going to be a trusted resource on that topic. Um, I still have imposter syndrome every day. You know, like I, I obviously have certifications and I've, you know, I can walk the walk, I can talk the talk, but there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of trainers out there and there's people that have so much information and knowledge. So I'm not going to pretend that I have all of the knowledge and all the information, but there's always someone or something that you can learn from. Um, and I, and you shouldn't feel like just because you don't know everything doesn't mean that you can't pursue yeah. it. Like you're, you should constantly be learning. So um, I say just ask for opportunities. The worst yeah. thing that someone says is no. Um, and then you can go somewhere else and ask for an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to give it to you. People always need help with something. Yeah. Um, and then just constantly be learning, reading, um, mm -hmm. watching YouTube videos, mm -hmm. watching podcasts, mm -hmm. all of that. So before we end this podcast, I just want to ask you that what's your future plans? Like where you want to see in the next like one year or two years? What's your goal? We all know that you want to win that game, but a part of that, yeah. a part of that, <laughs> what's your plan? Um, so I mentioned I relocated from Washington, D.C. to New Jersey um, about two and a half months ago. So um, I'm still kind of new here. So I'm developing like my client base here. Um, I want to break more into like um, the Manhattan and New York City um, mm. uh, fitness space too. Um, mm. I, I want to see my personal business grow even more. Um, my nutrition planning, meal planning for people, um, as well as the online programming. I love writing workout programming for people. Um, and I'd like to get to a point where I have, you know, a sustainable number of clients that I train in person, but I can help mm -hmm. hundreds more people virtually because, you know, you have obviously a lot more time yeah. for that. So I'd like to be able to build out my virtual business mm -hmm. a lot more so I can impact that many more people. Um, and then, as you said, my number one goal is to get that pro card as an physique bodybuilder. Um, so I can continue down that path too. So. Yeah, definitely. The kind of physique you have, the way you're maintaining, like definitely you're going to make it. So, you. could you please tell us that how our audience can find you, where they can find you? Yeah. Um, so, my Instagram handle is at jsalborn. Um, and that's my personal Instagram. My business Instagram is boss building. So, it's, it's boss and then B-L-B-G. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where I've got a lot of my, like, client testimonials, transformations. Um, but if people want to work with me, they can DM me um, on either of those platforms. Um, and then my uh, website is uh, boss-building, spelled out B-U-I-L-D-I-N-G.com. Um, and I've got some more testimonials, some more information there. Mm. Um, but like I said, I do meal planning and nutrition planning, uh, workout programming, virtual training, mm. and in-person personal training, mm. um, as well as competition prep for people that are looking to do bodybuilding, powerlifting, or CrossFit. So. Yeah. That's absolutely wonderful. Come on, guys. You have to go and just go and check the kind of value she's giving on yes, her Instagram please. profile and on her plans. Like, you must have to check. She's absolutely incredible. The, the way she's motivating her audience, her clients, you guys will get a lot of benefit. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine, for being here. We would thank love you, to man. have you over and over again. Thanks for giving your time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Thank Take you. care.